Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice polynomial equation. We have p of x squared plus 2x plus 3 equals the square of p of x plus 3, or p of x plus 3 squared. And we're going to try to find all polynomials that satisfy this equation. Are there any solutions? What kind of polynomials are solutions? How many solutions are there? We're going to try to answer those kinds of questions. I'm also going to show you a result from Wolfram Alpha. So think about if Wolfram Alpha can solve or handle a problem like this. You'll get to see my prompt and Wolfram Alpha's response. Okay, great. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to go ahead and take the quadratic expression here and write it as a perfect square. Or in other words, we're going to complete the square here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this. P of 2x squared plus 2x plus 3. I want to write it as P of. Notice that this can be written as x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay. We can basically write this as P, x squared plus 2x plus 1 plus 2. And this part is a perfect square. So we can write it as x plus 1 quantity squared plus an additional 2. Okay, now obviously there's a good reason why I do this and I'm going to do something similar on the right hand side and then we're going to use substitution. Okay, and notice that we can do something similar on the right hand side. Notice that this P of X plus 3 can be written as P of X plus 1 plus 2. So now X plus 1 becomes important. That's why we're going to use substitution. But notice that we had the squared, so we're going to square both sides. Make sense? So I changed the left-hand side and I changed the right-hand side. Now, we're going to go ahead and use substitution here. First of all, I want to let P of X plus 2 equal to Q of X. And why would you pick or why would I pick something like that? You might be questioning. And the reason behind that is if you evaluate P of X plus 2, let's say you replace X with X plus 1. Then you would be getting something like P of X plus 3. Does that make sense? I hope it does. You're about to see what's going to happen next. Okay. And of course, not only that, I'm also going to set x plus 1 equal to u. And notice that x plus 1 was something that repeated, right, over and over here and here. That's why we can now replace it with that. And that gives us the following. If you replace x plus v with x plus 1 with u, you get p of u squared plus 2 equals p of u plus 2 squared. This directly follows from here. Okay? Sounds good? Not only that though, because we set p of x plus 2 equal to q of x, so what happens to p of u plus 2? If you just replace x with u here and here, you get p of u plus 2, which is on the right hand side by the way, becomes q of u. Which is good because that's what we were looking for. Now, notice that this now can be replaced with Q of U, and I have to square it on the outside. Great. So here is the association I'm trying to get. I want to associate this one with that one. But what is P of U squared plus 2? That's a good question, right? What is Q? Well, Q is P of X plus 2. So let's rewrite it. P of X plus 2 is Q. So when you replace X with U squared, in other words, like or the other way around, you have to replace x with u squared on both sides. So p of u squared plus u, sorry, p of u squared plus 2 becomes q of u squared. That's kind of a lot of substitution, right? And then this basically becomes q of u squared. I hope this is not super confusing because I like confusing myself too sometimes. But now this is equal to this. So now we're going to replace P of U squared plus 2 with Q of U squared, which is from here, Q of U squared. You get the idea? This was what I was trying to get to, and I did it. Notice that everything is a lot simpler now. And of course, you don't, if you don't want to live in the U world, I mean, you all live in your real world, but this is a different U, you can go ahead and go to the X world, which means... We can replace u with x one more time. And by the way, people are saying like, how could you replace u with x and then x with something else? These are dummy variables. They're temporary. 
you just use them and discard them and then use them again as if nothing happened before. Make sense? You can continue to do this. Now we're going to express our expression in terms of x, which kind of looks a little more functional or functiony, whatever. Now, here's the million, million dollar question. What kind of equation can satisfy this? Or what kind of polynomial, I should say, right? Not equation. So what kind of qx will satisfy this type of equation? Think about it. And you can definitely think of a general term of a polynomial. For example, suppose q of x is an nth degree polynomial. Since we don't know what the degree is, we're just going to assume for n, which is an integer. I was about to write n, but uh, I'll probably say um, natural numbers, right? n is a natural number, uh, which means it's usually, well, it doesn't include zero in the U.S. and other countries are different uh they have different uh, definitions, but I know in France, and I believe in Turkey too, zero is considered a natural number. So let us know in the comment section if where you live, zero is considered a natural number. But I know in the United States, it's not. So natural numbers are the same as counting numbers. But what happens if it's a zero degree polynomial? We'll check that separately because that means Q is a constant, right? Okay, great. So suppose Q is not constant. Okay, Q is not a constant. What can Q be? Well, Q can be something like this, a n x to the n plus a n minus 1 x to the n minus 1. In other words, the general form of a polynomial, and it's going to end when a1 end in a1 x plus a sub 0, right? That's the constant term. Now, we're assuming that uh, not all of these coefficients are 0 because we don't want it to be a constant. We'll look at that separately, okay? So, you can go ahead and plug this whole thing. Obviously, that's going to be super long, but... You can do that. In other words, if I replace x with x squared, I'm going to get q of x squared. It's going to give me a n. And you replace x with x squared, you're going to get x to the power 2n. And then the coefficients are going to be unchanged, but everything is going to be doubled. And of course, you're only going to have even coefficients. You're not going to have any even uh, any odd powers. Coefficients are unchanged. The powers are all even. Make sense? Cool. Now, we want this to equal q of x squared. In other words, this equals this expression plus this expression, dot, dot, dot. And of course, it ends with a zero squared. Now, how do you make this possible? Is that possible at all? Now, think about it this way. What if Q is, maybe think simple. What if Q is linear? So something like AX plus B. Can I have Q of X squared, which is AX squared plus B? equal to q of x squared, which is ax plus b quantity squared. Let's go ahead and look at a simpler case because this will give us an idea. Let's start with that, a squared x squared plus 2abx plus b squared equals, I want it to equal this, ax squared plus b. This tells us that there is no x term, so the coefficient of x must be 0, and the constant terms have to be equal, in other words, a b equals 0, which means a 0 or b is 0. But the last one also gives us b squared equals b. This means b is 0 or b is 1. If you look at the first two conditions, then you realize, uh-oh, b equals 0 is probably a good choice. Let's go with that. Because if b is 1, a needs to be 0, then our polynomial is not going to be linear. It's going to be constant, which, again, we're going to look at separately, right? So now, uh, if b is 0 and a squared equals a, I don't want a to be 0, so I want a to be 1. What does that mean? a is 1, b is 0. That means that q of x equals x will satisfy this equation. But what is it in general? For a linear, we got this. What would happen if we assumed q was quadratic? You can definitely do this, but let me tell you something. We want this equation to be satisfied. q of x squared equals q of x squared. And the polynomial that satisfies this is kind of like a polynomial with a single term, the highest power, which is x to the power n. Great. And you can definitely easily verify that and also prove that there are no other solutions. But guess what? We're looking for p, and this is equal to p of x plus 2. Remember, we were trying to solve for p. Now, in this equation, again, we can do substitution, which is something we use very frequently, right? Replace x with x minus 2 to get p of x. 
and p of x is just going to be x minus 2 to the power n. Now, what is that supposed to mean? As long as n is a natural number, this is going to work. Now, what happens if q is a constant? That's a good question, right? If q is a constant, then q of x squared is also going to be a constant c, but q of x squared will be c squared. So we basically want c to be c squared. So c squared equals c implies c is 0 or c is 1. Now, no, obviously, the 0 polynomial definitely satisfies this equation. But what does that mean? If q is 0, then p is going to be, remember, q is p of x plus 2. That means p is also going to be identically 0. What would happen if q is 1? That means p is also going to be 1 because it's a constant. Makes sense? And constant polynomials will satisfy it as long as c has these values. Besides that, these are all the solutions where n is a natural number. And, for example, x minus 2, x minus 2 to the second, third, fourth, millionth power, they're all solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and... Bye-bye.